All right, folks, for my next review, what I'd like to do is talk about uh, this game that Tom picked up for me. Um, seeing as how I am a big fan of Bang the Dice game, and I'm also kind of a fan of The Walking Dead, he picked this up for me as a birthday present this year. And uh, so what I'd like to do is take a look at it with you and see how it stacks up to its predecessor, Bang the Dice game. So, wait for my closing statements for that. Let's take a look at the game. Looking at what comes in the box for Bang the Dice game, The Walking Dead, you have, first of all, five dice. You have the eight roll cards. Um, then you also have 16 character cards, each that has the unique ability and uh, what the health of that person is going to be. Then there are eight summary cards or uh, player aid cards, I guess you could say, that, that describe what each of the different die faces uh, do. Then you also get nine walker tokens, which are the uh, little zombie head uh, tokens over there. Um, blood splat tokens that have uh, different values on them. So you have uh, 30 value ones and then you also have uh, 13 value threes that come in the game along with the rule book. The artistic set that they decided to go with uh, is the comic books only. And as you can see, they have uh, different of the comic book characters. There's Eugene, Abraham, uh, the governor, uh, Negan, Dwight, Ezekiel, Glenn, Tyrese, Michonne, Maggie, Rick, Andrea, Jesus, Rosita, Carl, and Father Gabriel. And each of them have how much health they start the game with, as well as a special ability that they play the entire game with as well. So that's the character cards. Then you have the player aid cards that show what each of the die faces do and what you have to do when those die faces are rolled. And then you also have the roll cards that tell you who you are uh, in the game. There are the survivors. So the leader of the survivors. Then you have uh, those that are helping the leader of the survivors. And then you have the saviors uh, who are working against the survivors. And then you also have the loners who are the hilltop and kingdom. And so these are the different uh, roles that you will have. If you have played Bang the Dice game, uh, the Western version, this is the sheriff and his two deputies. These are the outlaws, and these are the two renegades. Now let's talk about the roll cards that you're going to be given at the beginning of the game. These will all be dealt out. Uh, depending on the number of players in the game, some of them are not used. Uh, but there is at least one from each type used in each game. The leader of the survivors is uh, the leader of that group of people. And he is going to be the only one that is known from the very beginning of the game. Uh, if the, whoever is dealt to the leader of the survivors turns their card over, shows everybody that they are the leader, and they also get plus two hit points. The other two survivors, however, stay hidden so that nobody knows who they are, and their job is to protect the leader and then kill the saviors at all costs. And then the loners also need to be dead as well. So, basically what they're trying to do is make sure that the leader is the last person standing. And then the saviors, their only job is to kill the leader of the survivors. If the leader of the survivors wins, I'm sorry, is ever eliminated from the game, the saviors automatically win. The two loners, Hilltop and Kingdom, they have to be the last person standing. For example, if in an eight-player game, which is where all of these would be used, if the Hilltop and Kingdom players are the last ones standing, in other words, the Hilltop and Kingdom players are facing off against the leader and they kill him, the saviors win. Even though all of the saviors died during the course of the game, these two guys can only be the winners if they are the last person standing at the end of the game. So in order for either of these people to win, they have to be the last, one of the last two 
when the other one is the survivor, the leader of the survivor, and they knock him off. So these guys are trying to make sure that all of these guys are dead. These guys are trying to make sure that he's dead. These guys are trying to make sure that they are the last persons standing. So what I like to do is just go through each character card and uh, explain their special powers. First we have here Father Gabriel. He starts the game with eight hit points. And then his special power says at the beginning of your turn, any player of your choice gains one health point. So at the beginning of his turn, he can choose anybody at the table, including himself, to receive one life point. Michonne starts the game with eight life points, and her special power says you can use one one face as a two face and vice versa. If she's trying to hit somebody that is two spaces away and she's only rolled ones, she can still do it. If she's trying to hit somebody that's one space away and she only rolls two, she can still do it. So she can use ones and twos interchangeably. Jesus starts the game with seven hit points. His special ability says you never lose more than one health when overrun. So after taking the walker tokens, uh, when all of them are gone, the people are overrun and whoever has walker tokens in front of them takes hit points for as many walker tokens in front of them that they have. So let's say that Jesus had four walker tokens in front of him and then they run out on somebody else's turn. He would now be in line to take four hit points but with his special power, he only takes one. Maggie starts the game with eight life points, and her special ability says if you did not roll any ones or twos, you can get you can heal yourself two hit points. So when she's done re-rolling all of her dice, if she didn't roll any ones or twos, she, ga she gains two life points. Tyrese starts the game with eight hit points, and his special ability says once per turn, you can use a med kit to double a one or a two. So basically, if he is dealing damage to somebody that is one space away, he can use a med kit to double the damage that he does to that person. So instead of just doing one damage one space away, he would do two damage two spaces away. But he does have to use a med kit in order to use that ability. Rick starts the game with eight hit points, and it says that uh, you may take a walker token instead of losing a hit point, except to infection or when overrun. So if he has to lose a hit point, if somebody attacks him for any reason other than the infection face dies or when um, there are no more walker tokens left and uh, everyone is overrun, except for those two uh, situations, if he ever has to lose a life, he can take a walker token instead of losing that life. Carl starts the game with eight hit points, and his special ability says that you only need two grenades to use the grenade power. So normally other people have to roll three grenades on their dice in order to cause everybody to lose one damage. Carl only has to roll two grenades to make everybody lose one damage. Rosita uh, starts the game with nine hit points. Her special power is you never lose a hit point from a grenade. So if somebody does the grenade special action, they roll two, in Carl's case, or three grenades. Everybody is supposed to lose one hit point. Rosita never loses a hit point that way. Andrea starts the game with nine hit points, and her special power says she may use one or two for players sitting one space further. So if she only rolls once and she wants to hit somebody that is two spaces away, she can still do it. If she wants to hit somebody that is three spaces away and she has a two, she can do it. Basically her ones turn into twos and her twos turn into threes. Glenn starts the game with eight hit points and his special ability says that each time you lose a health point, you discard one of your walker tokens. Ezekiel starts the game with eight life points and his special ability allows him to make one extra reroll. Normally you only have two rerolls, uh, but Ezekiel can have three rerolls if he desires. Dwight starts the game with nine hit points and his special ability is 
Each time a player is eliminated, he gains two life points from that happening. The governor starts the game with seven hit points, and whenever a player makes the governor lose one or more hit points, that person that made him lose the health takes a walker. Negan starts the game with nine hit points, and if at, at the beginning, well, rather, at, during Negan's turn, if he has four or fewer hit points, he can gain two hit points for every medical kit that he uses. Uh, normally, med kits only heal one, but if Negan is at four or lower, med kits let him gain two instead of just one. And then finally, Eugene starts the game at seven hit points, and his special ability is for each grenade, he can discard one walker from any player. So if he rolls two grenades at the end of his re-rolling, then he can remove two walkers from any people, uh, any person on, on the table, including himself. Okay, now to explain the dice. A med kit lets you heal one damage. Unless you are Negan and below at, at four or lower, you can heal two. But more often than not, it heals one. A grenade token, uh, I'm sorry, a grenade face. If you roll three grenade faces, like so, that means everybody at the table takes one damage, except for you. Okay? Now, uh, if you are Carl in the game, you only have to roll two in order to do that. Infection faces, uh, one, first of all, it locks the die. You cannot re-roll this die if it comes up. Second, if you roll three of them, if at any time you have three uh, infection dice rolled at the same time, your turn immediately stops. You take a hit point, playing around with the zombies too much, I guess, but then the rest of your dice are also resolved. So in this case, you would take a hit point for the uh, three infection dies that you rolled, but you would also heal one for the Medicaid, for, for the med kit. So that is the infection die face. Walker die face. Uh, this means that you take a walker from the pool and add it in front of you. There are only nine walker tokens in the game. So once all of the walker tokens have been taken, people are overrun. And the people that have walker tokens in front of them have to lose a health for each walker token that they have. If I take the last walker token on my roll and I have to take two more, then that means I'm going to take three hit points from being overrun. So that's the walker die face. The last two die faces to be shown are either the two die face or the one die face. A one means that you can only damage the people who are sitting directly next to you on either side, to the right or the left. A two means that you can damage someone sitting two spaces away from you in either direction, to your right or to your left. And those are the different die faces for the dies that you can roll. So a turn would consist of taking your dice and rolling them. Okay, I have a one and a one. That means I can damage uh, the people that are on either side of me immediately. I have a grenade token, a med kit, and a walker. Okay, so immediately I would have to take a walker token. All right, now I have the chance to reroll any of these. Let's say I want to, I don't really know who my people are that are sitting next to me yet, so I don't know if I want to damage them. I haven't taken any hit points yet, so I'm going to reroll that one too. And I can always reroll this. Now, the grenade token is kind of a general thing. You can use it to damage everybody if you roll two more. So I'm going to go for that because I don't know who exactly I want to go after yet, but maybe I do. Okay, well, I rolled another zombie. Uh, uh, zombie head or walker token so I have to take that roll twos and twos a med kit and another the guy well this wasn't a very this means I can damage two people 
two spaces away, or one person two spaces away twice. This lets me heal one. Haven't taken any hits yet, so I'm gonna reroll that one. I'm gonna reroll this one too. I'll keep those two just in case. So I reroll, this is my last reroll, and I rolled another zombie head, another walker, and a med kit. Well, again, I haven't taken any damage yet, so that's going to hurt me. That's not going to help me, so uh, I'm stuck with it. I have to take that. So I took three of those guys. This doesn't do me any good because I didn't roll two more grenades to go with it. So now I would choose two people, uh, one damage each, two spaces away, or one person takes two damage, two spaces away. So that's being the dice game, The Walking Dead. If you've played Bang the Dice Game, the Western version, all this really is is a re-theming of that game. So there's, I would say there's no real reason for you to buy both unless you have a group of people uh, in your group that are really into the whole zombie genre of games or if they just really like the show Walking Dead or the comic books Walking Dead. Um, then I would say that maybe you have a reason to purchase the game to cater to that specific group of people in your group. Uh, but if you don't have that group of people and you already own Bang the Dice Game, uh, there's not a real reason, uh, a real tangible reason at least, uh, to buy uh, Bang the Dice Game The Walking Dead because it is essentially the exact same game with simply different terminology and different pictures. Uh, so with that being said, I do enjoy Bang the Dice game a lot. Uh, I have a great time playing it. Uh, the Walking Dead version of the game, the component quality is a little bit uh, cheaper. Um, the dice are painted, uh, not really painted, but maybe a, some type of uh, adhesive to where the, the, the die faces, if you, if you use them a lot, could rub off. Uh, whereas with Bang the Dice game, they're engraved, so they're not going to come off. They're always going to be there. Um, uh, the other components in the game are pretty similar. The card quality of The Walking Dead is, is not as good as um, the uh, Bang the Dice game. It's a little bit better. Um, with uh, They just have a better finish on them. They feel a little bit better. Uh, give you an idea of the dice. See, these guys have really nice engraved. You can feel how they've been cut into the actual die, whereas these, uh, they're, they're just little uh, decals or paint or something to that effect sprayed onto them or stuck onto them. Uh, so these will probably wear off a little bit better, uh, a little bit faster. So that's one thing to think about. Um uh, it is the same game. It plays exactly the same. There's no real differences in the rules uh, or anything to that effect. So if you enjoy being the dice game, you'll enjoy the Walking Dead version of it because it's the same game. Uh, but maybe you don't like zombies. Maybe you don't like the Walking Dead. So that's going to be a strike against it for you. Uh, it really comes down to what you want in your specific collection. Um, as far as I can tell, though, these are uh, Bang the Dice Game and, and Bang the, the Dice Game, The Walking Dead. It's the same game, just a retheme. So take that for what it's worth. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.